Welcome friends, if you are watching this video, you probably want to learn more about human design. You've come into contact with it and you've seen this graph, you've seen all of these centers and these gates and these numbers and you don't understand and you want to know a little bit more. So I'm going to help you with this. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our profile. You can do that on Jovian Archive. So you just put your birth information as accurate as possible, the date, the time, and the location, the country that you were born in. Now, once you have that, you're going to get a graph pretty much like this one. And you're going to be like, oh, what are those little shapes in colors and all of these little things in black and in red? So let's try to understand where this is coming from and then we'll go from there. Here we can see the human design body graph with its nine centers. And we can also see around it the astrological wheel. Here you can see all of the symbols, uh, the Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, etc., the astrological signs. And overlaid on top of that, we can see numbers. These are the 64 gates of the I Ching. So basically human design is a combination of the I Ching and astrology. Now you may see that when you were born, the planets were in specific positions, the sun, the moon, the Earth, the Mercury, Venus, Mars, all of those planets were in a specific position. And the position that those planets were in were impacting the neutrinos, these very, very, very small particles that are in the atmosphere, that are in the whole cosmos. And that is going to have an impact on you. And that is the premise on which this is based. And there is scientific evidence that neutrinos exist and do have an effect in physical reality. So in this case, the sun, when I was born, was in the first line of gate 23. What does that mean? It means that the sun was in the sign of Taurus, but not just in that sign, also in a specific degree that corresponds to the 23rd gate of the I Ching when you overlay it on the astrological chart. This gate has a specific trait and is called the gate of assimilation. And it gives you a particular gift, any gate that you have a planet on gives you a particular gift. This one in particular is the energy of bringing something forward, of knowing something and expressing it, of bringing it forward. And it combines with other uh, gates, in this case the gate 43, as you can see in the other side of its channel, and that is the capacity, the mental capacity to structure that information. So the 43 is structuring and the 23 is expressing it. And there's a potential for all of the gates and the channels of the profile that is just like that. Now, we can see, now that we look at the whole chart, that we have all of the planets uh, activating a gate and a line, yeah? So, the Sun, the Earth, the Moon, the North Node, the South Node, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are all activating something, any of the gates that you he see here in the body graph. But wait, why is there one in black and another one in red? So the one in black is your personality. This is what you're aware of. This is something that you're conscious of. It's your mind. It's something that is very present. And it's something that you do. This is calculated in the moment of your birth, the moment you come out of the womb of your mother. And then there is the design part. This is the red part. And this is calculated three months before you are born. It is believed that it's the moment the soul enters your body. And it's what you are, it's being, it's something that is subconscious, that you have deep in the intelligence of your body, but you may not be necessarily aware of it. Now the combination of these two aspects, and this is what makes human design very rich, is what gives birth to the body graph. And in that uh, body graph you may see that there are some lines that are in black and some lines that are in red, and they correspond to the personality and the design. Uh, sides. You may also see that there are some lines that are black and red, and that means that ad activation is both in the personality and in the design. That same uh, gate was activated by two different celestial bodies. Now, when you have one of these gates, you light up half of what is called the channel. In this case, you may see that there's half a line in red and half a line in white, or half a line in black and half a line in red. And that means that you only have a potential there that might be activated by someone else or a celestial body transit, a certain moment in time where that other gate is activated and that potential is activated. Or you might have both. You might have, like in this case, uh, the one and the eight 
I have both of those activations and that forms a channel. So you might have a defined gate or a defined channel. And this is quite different and makes a big change in your in the way that you should handle the, the power of those gates. Now, whenever you have a channel, the centers that are interconnected by the channel become defined. They are colored in. As you can see, there are some centers that are in white and some centers that are colored. It doesn't matter for now which color they are in. You just have to know that whenever there is a channel, there's an activation, there's a definition. Now, when we're talking about definition, what does it mean? When a center is defined, it has a fixed expression. It's something that you can rely on. It's something that is always present, something you can trust. And it's something that can also condition other people when they have the same center in white or undefined. Now, an undefined center is an inconsistent expression. It doesn't mean that you don't have it. It means that it comes and it goes. Maybe in the case of the Agnya center here in the third eye, it might be that sometimes you remember things, sometimes you don't remember them, sometimes you have the capacity to structure your thoughts very accurately, and sometimes you lose that capacity all of a sudden. And this might happen when you are with other people around, or maybe you have a particular friend which you can be super expressive and clear with, and another group of friends that you don't have that capacity. And that might be because you have an undefined center. Now, not only that, but the white centers also amplify the energy of other people. So in the case of the emotional center, for instance, if you have in this center on the right, on the bottom right, if you have an undefined solar plexus center, emotional center, you might amplify the emotions of other people. You might also feel like you don't want to piss people off. You don't want to confront people with the things that you need or your boundaries because you're scared of that emotional explosion, that emotional reaction that is amplified through your emotional center. It's also where we learn the most in life. These are the lessons that we came here to learn and we might be particularly inclined and interested to go into the areas of our undefined centers. It's also in, by a general rule, people who have more open centers are more sensitive to the environment around them. Now, here we have a brief uh, definition of all of the centers. We're not going to go too deep into that. There's another video that I make that goes much deeper into the defined and undefined uh, characteristics of all the centers, and I'm going to put a link right up there. But just for now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to describe them very quickly. The head is the inspiration and the pressure to think is a certain energy that comes and makes you think things want to find the meaning and the answers uh, in your life the agnya center is like a computer it organizes it perceives information it structures it it stores it in the memory uh, the throat is a center of expression and action and yes it's about communication but also about doing things in your life and particularly initiating things in your life the G center is about love and direction, and not a direction that comes from the mind, but a direction that comes from the soul. Here is the seat of the magnetic monopole, and this is what leads us to the experiences uh, we need to have in this life. Then you have the will or the ego, and this is our self-worth, or drive to achieve things, and our sense of self-value. The solar plexus, as we said, are the emotional, the emotional waves, the spleen on the other side is the intuition, the instinct, and the immune system. Then you have the sacral, which is our vitality and our capacity to do sustained amounts of work. And finally, on the bottom, we have the root, and it's the adrenal glands, the drive to evolve, the drive to grow, the drive to become something better, and it comes in pulses during your life. Now, one of the most important factors in the human design system that we finally arrive to are the aura types. Now, depending on which centers you have defined in your chart, it's going to determine which aura type is yours. Now, this is your energetic field. It's about two times uh, your hands stretched out as far as you can. Now, this energy field can have very different characteristics. For instance, if you're a generator, this field is enveloping. It invites people in. It keeps them together. Now, if you're a manifester, it's quite the opposite. It's a closed aura. It's an aura that pushes people to do things, to initiate things. It's not open, it's not inviting like a generator. 
Then the projector. The projector is a penetrating aura. It's an aura of a person that can see very deeply into others. It has a great insight when it goes inside the other. Now, there are two important things about this aura. First, it needs to be invited. You cannot go around just going deep through everyone you know. You have to be recognized. You have to be invited for that. And that makes a big difference when you know that you're a projector to not be giving unsolicited advice, to not try to correct people. Because you see, you see how things can be done better. But you need to be recognized first before you do that. And second, it's a one-on-one -on -one aura. It's not an inviting aura like the generator that likes to have a lot of people around. You can only go deep with one person. That makes a huge difference. And finally, we have the aura of the reflector, which is only 1% of the population. And this is a very open aura, and it's sampling the environment. If you see in a group of 100 people one reflector, that reflector is going to be a great representation of the state of health and all the characteristics of the environment around them. Now, these four types have a strategy, and this is the way that you're going to go through life. We're going to go through these very quick in this video, but feel free to Google or search a little bit more about them. This is one of the most important aspects in human design. Now, if you're a generator, you have to wait to respond. You have to check into your sacral, your belly button, and see what life is bringing you. Do you want to eat a pizza today? Do you feel like going dancing? And your belly is going to be like, uh-huh, or uh-uh. And that is just the secret. That is, that is it. That is how, as a generator, you should go through life. You shouldn't listen to your mind. If your body's saying, uh-huh, just do it. If your body's saying, uh-uh, even if you have a strong commitment that you made or that your mind is telling you to do something else, you shouldn't listen to it. And then comes the manifestor strategy. Inform before acting. Now, before you initiate something, because you're going to get that drive to start things, before you do that, tell other people around you what you're going to do. Let them know first and see what kind of effect that has in your life. That can have a huge impact in all of your relationships, both uh, personal and in business. For the projector, we just went through it. Wait for the invitation. Don't give advice. Don't give your gifts before you're invited. Wait until someone recognizes. And then finally, for the reflector, you have to be super aware of all of the transits, all of the planets moving throughout a 28-day cycle. Because those are really going to affect the way that you make decisions. If it's possible for important decisions, you should wait for at least a month to see, to taste all of those faces and see and get the clarity for your decisions. And also these types have not self themes. And this is kind of like the compass that is going to tell you, ha, mm, you're not doing the right thing in your life. When you're feeling this emotion, uh, maybe you should go back to using your strategy uh, that we were talking about before. Uh, for the manifestor is anger, for the generator is frustration, for the projector is bitterness, resentfulness, and for the reflector is disappointment. Do you ever feel those in your life? Do they match your type? Let me know in the comments. Next, another one of the most important things in human design. We talked about the aura types and the strategy. Now comes the authorities. Now, there are seven authorities and they are hierarchical. It means like if you have the emotional then that's your authority. If not, it's the sacral. If not, it's the splenic, and so on and so forth. Today, we're going to talk about the first three because that's more than 90% of the population. So this is how you make aligned decisions in your life. In any moment that you have to make a decision, especially an important one, like a new job, moving somewhere, a new relationship, etc., it's very recommended that you use your authority and see what happens in your life. Now, if you have an emotional authority, you need to go through your full emotional cycle before you make any decision. So you might get excited, then you go neutral, and then you go into a sad space or a depressed or a low space, and then you come back to neutral. So once you've gauged this decision that you're about to do from all of these points of view, from the high of the excitement, from the low state, and you've come back to the neutral state, now, that will crystallize, that will become clear, the decision will become obvious after you have all of this landscape before you. Now, it's important for you to not make any rush decisions, do not be impulsive, always wait to make important decisions, at least sleep on it. If you have a sacred authority, we went through it for the generators, all generators have a sacred authority, you have to respond to your gut, it's uh-huh or uh-uh, and it doesn't matter what your mind says, always listen to your body.
Then we have the splenic authority, and you only have this if you don't have an emotional center defined and you don't have a sacral center defined, and it's the instinct, the intuition, and it's in the moment. It's the opposite of the emotional. You're supposed to be a very spontaneous person, and the closer you are to a certain decision, an event that is happening today, then your body knows. That's when you tune into your body and your body might say like, no, alarm, danger, I, I shouldn't be going there. And it's not, it doesn't have an explanation. It doesn't come from your mind. It's just your body saying like, danger, no, let's not do this. And it might be not going to a store, not going on a hike or not going to work that day. And perhaps if you have a splenic authority and you haven't listened to this before, perhaps you found an excuse or your mind convinced you or someone convinced you to do otherwise, Perhaps you had an experience where something really bad happened because you didn't listen to your intuition. Did, you, did that ever happen to you before? Let me know in the comments. There are four more authorities, but it's a smaller percentage of the population, so we're not going to go through it in this video. There is a course on the seven authorities on my website if you want to know more. I know, that's a lot of information, but I'm trying to give you all of the aspects of human design here, and you can pause or review the video again tomorrow if that's too much for you. Now. Another one of the most important parts of the human design system is the 12 profiles. Now, remember, when we were looking at the chart, we were looking at our sun. You have the sun in the personality and the sun in the design. And in our case, in my case, the sun had the 23.1 in the personality and the 49.3 in the design. Now, that means that I'm at 1-3. That line on the sun personality is the first one and the second number is the line on the design side. So what do those profiles mean? These are the roles that we're supposed to cover in our lives. And there are six of them, as the six lines of the I Ching, as you can see in the graph. The first three are personal, individual, as individually centered, and the second three are transpersonal, or more focused outwards, or society or the environment. Now, I'm going to go quickly through all of them. Uh, the first line is the investigator. It's also called the creator in the Jinkies language. And these are people that like to go deep into things, that like to learn a lot, like to go deep into knowledge. They're always fascinated by learning something new. And also very creative people, people that are bringing new things into the world. The main wound that these people have is insecurity, because as much as they know, they also know that there's a lot they don't know. So they always want to go deeper and build that foundation very strongly uh, to go forward. Also, it's important for us to be honest. I'm a line one myself to be honest with what you know and express that. And that will give you security. OK, this is how much I know This is how much I can give you and come from a place of honesty. The line two is called the hermit, also the dancer in the Jinkies language. And in contrast with the line one people, these are people that have an ease into things. They have a natural talent. They might tend to be want to be alone, to want to be reclusive. But at some point, someone will come and they will tell you like, hey, you're very good at this. You should be teaching this or you should be dancing or playing that music for people or whatever that is. The line two is brought outside of their hermit cave to offer their gifts to the world. It's all about waiting for a worthy calling to go out. Now, one of the issues that the line two has, one of the wounds, is denial. Denying that they have a natural talent, denying that they're needed, or denying any aspect, like being blind to any aspect of their relationships or their money situation or whatnot. And the solution for that is to stay in a high frequency with no agendas, with ease, with flow. Try to flow and dance through life, as the name of the line describes it. The third line is called the martyr or the changer. And this is a line that is very dynamic, that is excited about trying new things. It's all about trial and error for the third line. It's one of the most pragmatic lines. The line three always knows what works and what doesn't work and tries new things and makes mistakes. Now, one of the issues for the third line is shame for these mistakes. It's like, oh, I made a mistake again, or that didn't work, or someone telling them like, oh, that, you're going to fail again. And you cannot let yourself be carried away with that. You have to take it with humor. You know, relax a little bit and laugh at yourself and try again uh, another day. Again, it's very healthy for these lines to experiment, to try new things, to be uh, spontaneous and see what life can bring them. 
Now the line four is the opportunist, the server, also called the politician. And it's the first of the transpersonal lines. And it's very important for these people to have their own network, their own family, their own circle of close people. Uh, these are people that are very dependent on their environment. Uh, it might be that a child uh, goes through life and stays in their parents' home for a longer time than other kids because they're a line four. If you're a line four, you should not leave your job if you don't have another job lined up. It's very important to create a long-term structure, a long-term community for the line four. Now, the wound of the line four is the rejection, being rejected by your community, by your friends, by your group of people. And they can tend to reject other people first before they are rejected. The shadows of the line four have to do with manipulation, with corruption, all of these kinds of things of politicians are, the shadows are lined up with the line four. Now we move on to the line five. Now the line five has a natural talent for fixing things, has a natural talent for practical solutions, for seeing what needs to be done and offering the solution for that. Now, the line five has this thing that is called a projection field. And people will see a line five and will say like, this person is my savior. This person has the answers for me. This person has the solutions. Or this person is the devil. This person is the worst of the worst. This person is the cause of all my problems. And one of the difficulties line fives has is that they don't feel seen. They feel like people might be seeing always this projection, this screen in front of them that people are seeing and not really seeing their deeper self. And this can be a cause of much grief for the line five. Now, the line five has a very seductive, very powerful energy, and, and this is beautiful. But be careful, because if you cannot deliver on the solutions that you promise, you're gonna have a hard time. You're gonna move from that angel side of the projection to the devil side of the projection. So you have to be very practical with that. And also you have to listen to others. Don't try to impose your will on things to be a tyrant, but really listen to what the environment needs and how you can apply your solutions in that way. You might feel guilty for something you did or something you didn't do. That is a trait, that's the wound of the line five. And you have to practice forgiveness to move through that. Now, finally, the line six, this is the last of the lines. This is the visionary, the role model or the teacher. And this is a line that goes through three cycles in life. Until they are 30 years old, after their Saturn return, they behave like a line three. So take the guidelines for the line three if you are line six and are under 30 years old. But after that, they change. They go through two more phases. First, they go on the roof. And this means that they become aloof and a little bit apart from society and everything that is happening in the world. And then when they 50, they are 50 years old, they come back into the world and they become a servant, a teacher, uh, someone as a role model who's going to bring all that wisdom from all the, that time that they learned. Now, they need patience because these are people that usually develop later in life because they have all these cycles. And one of the main issues that they have is aloofness, arrogance, thinking that they're better than everybody else, like looking at everyone from a high horse. If you're a line six, try to come down to earth, especially if you're dealing with line ones, two, and threes, which have their feet on the ground and cannot really meet your vision yet, uh, because you have this vision of the future, try to meet them where they are and see uh, what happens with your dynamics if you go from that place. Those lines are divided into profiles, and you can see there are 12 available profiles down below. Those are all the possible combinations. And you also have to think which one is the personality and which one is the design. If you have a line one personality, you're going to be very aware of this aspect of investigating and creating that you have. Uh, but if it's in your design side, perhaps you have it hidden. Perhaps you're not super aware of this side of you and it's something that you can bring through life. And this is the magic of human design. It can point you to gifts and purpose and direction that you didn't even know you had. So those are some of the main aspects of the human design chart. Now let's go back to the chart we had in the beginning and see how we can apply it. You can now know your type and what is your strategy in life. You know your profile. And you know which are the ways, your innate roles that you're here to fulfill and see how you can lean into them. You also know your inner authority, how you're supposed to make decisions in your life, 
Are you supposed to wait for your emotions to pass? Are you supposed to listen to your belly button saying, uh huh, or uh uh? Or are you supposed to listen to your intuition and your instinct in the moment or any of the others? What is your strategy in your life? And what is your not self theme? What is the thing that can bring you out of alignment? And that can be the sign for you to come back to your center. Now, there are more things like the definition, split definition, single definition, triple split definition, and the incarnation cross, which is a big arc in your life. It's a journey that goes through your whole life, and it's one of the main uh, landmarks of your purpose. But it's something that we're going to talk about in another video. You have enough for now. So now you can apply all of these things. If you want to learn more, if you want to go deeper, I have courses that go really deep into each of these aspects, the centers, the authorities, the types, and so on and so forth. There is also the variables, which are the arrows that uh, are there in the profile. They talk about the way that you should eat, the, way, the environments that are good for you, the awareness and your mind, your perspective and your motivation in your life. But it's also an advanced topic. So that was all for today. If you have more questions about your own profile, feel free to leave them in the comments or book an extended session with me so we can go deeper into your relationships, your business, and how you can use human design to empower all of those. I also have courses that go in depth into each of these topics. We have a reader certification program coming soon. And there's also the cards that have all of this information, very easy to read, very nicely laid out in a beautiful design. Those are very, very helpful if you're going through your human design experiment. Human design is all about the experiment. It's not about what you read in the theory. It's not what Ra says, it's not what I say. It's what you can get out of listening to these things and experiencing them and implementing it in your own life and seeing for yourself how they work and what benefit you can get out of them. So I hope you start your experiment soon. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, send the video to your friends and see you on the next one.